okay so well done you know hopefully you packed your bag right you've now got to where you're going to train and perhaps it's early in the morning you know perhaps you've worked all day but what you're looking to do now is a little bit of activation stuff that basically is going to get the body in the right uh, sort of like state before you go and do the rest of your warm-up and so muscles get a bit like sleepy they can be tired they can be stiff maybe you've worked all day maybe you've just got out of bed and so doing a little bit of what's called an activation routine is enough to switch some of the muscles on before you go out the door training and that's really going to help the body and help reduce injuries and help you just feel better when you start the run and so let me crack on and show you some of these exercises. And so we're going to start with some calf walks and you're up nice and tall on the calves and your chest. You're keeping it up nice and tall and you're walking along on your tippy toes and that's all about your calves. And so we'll do a little set back and we're not looking to do, I know that everybody doesn't have all the time in the world and so we're looking to do a quick, short and snappy activation routine before you get going. And so the next thing you want to do is heel walks. And so this time your emphasis is on walking on your heels, but your toes point up towards the sky. We're still keeping our chest up nice and tall, and that's starting to open the body up in an upward trajectory so that when you're running, your technique and your body is up nice and tall. And so what you wanna do is picture a string and pretend that there's a string running from the base of the body all the way up to the sky and it's pulling everything up nice and tall and that's a, a beautiful running technique and so we've warmed up you know a bit of calves we've warmed up a bit of the you know the the heel walks and now what we're going to do is a couple of adductor lunges and so down in the adductor lunge and back up down in the adductor lunge back up down in the adductor lunge and you can do five of those on one side and then you can switch to the other side and so now we're going to move to the other side and again down in the adductor lunge and the emphasis is on the heel the heel and the back glute and you're sinking that down and then springing off number four number five okay and so now we're going to go into some lunges and so opposite arm opposite leg remember chest up nice and tall opposite arm opposite leg opposite arm opposite leg opposite arm opposite leg and again, we can go five each side, opposite arm, opposite leg, opposite arm, opposite leg, opposite arm, opposite leg, <laughs> one more, opposite arm, opposite leg. So the next thing we're gonna do, if you don't have a TheraBand, a TheraBand's really useful for glute activation, but sometimes you forget it, sometimes you don't have it with you. You can pretend you're stood up against your car, or you can just do it stationary, and your leg's going out the back. And that's starting to get a little bit of the glutes activated and you want to feel it in the back of the glute the upper part of the glute and then you can go out to one side and try to keep the chest still up nice and tall so we're doing five out to the left perfect and then five straight back okay and so we did five out to the side we did five diagonal and we did five straight back now we're going to swap to the other side one two three four five and see if you can keep yourself nice and balanced with that chest up tall five out the back one two three four five and then five diagonal one two three four five okay so we're starting to sort of get the body moving a bit. We're starting to wake it up a little bit. The last thing I'd do is I'd bring a stretch and mat and I would do what's called hamstring walkouts and a tiny little bit of core stability. And so we're going down. You're gonna tuck your pelvis and make sure that when your back is on the ground, you can put your hands underneath your lower back and that's called tucking the pelvis. Pelvis is tucked up into a glute bridge Hold for 10 to 15 seconds. Back down. You can do one more like that. Make sure the hands can't go under the lower back. 10 to 15 seconds. Okay, now we move on to the hamstring walkouts. Your hamstring walkouts are similar to the glute bridge with the pelvis tucked, but we're walking out the hamstrings. Okay, one more.
okay? So the last bit that we're gonna do is we're just gonna switch on your core stability so that we make sure when you go off into your run, your core's in a good place and your muscles are activated. And so all I'm gonna do for my core stability is a little bit of a row. And I'll do 10 of these, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. And so we've kind of gone from the toes to the calves, a little bit of quads, a little bit of hamstrings, a little bit of glutes, a little bit of core stability. And the last thing we're gonna do is just take a couple of deep breaths. Up nice and tall, big stretch. A little bit of movement, get the diaphragm open, rotate the back a little bit. Again, big stretch, deep breath. And so now what you're ready to do is start a bit of a warm-up jog. And so a lot of people aren't putting a big enough emphasis on their warm-up jog and their starting sessions. And they've gone from maybe working all day or maybe you've just got up in the morning. You've put no emphasis on any kind of warm-up. You know, you haven't done any activation. You haven't done any drills. And so once you start the session, your muscles are freezing cold. But not only that, your psychology isn't ready to go. And so what I like to do is get the warm-up jog done, but maybe halfway through the warm-up jog, I start to pick that pace up a little bit. And so I pick that pace up, I bring it into more of a steady pace. My easy run pace is about seven minutes per mile. My marathon pace is about five minutes per mile. I like to start my warm-up about 7.30, Nice and easy, slow pace. And then as I start to feel a bit better, I can increase the pace of that warm up to maybe like, maybe I can increase the pace of that warm up to about 6.30. And then as I'm getting towards like, let's say I'm doing 10 minutes warm up and I start to get towards seven minutes, eight minutes, and I'm sort of getting towards the end of the warm up that's when I can start to increase that pace and bring the pace to more of a steady pace. And now I'm gonna bring that pace to about six minutes per mile, about one minute per mile slower than my marathon pace. And again, we're, we're bridging that gap between easy jogging and now we're not jogging easy anymore. Now we're starting to get going. You get the legs physically going, but you get the psychology going too. And so what you're doing here is you're bridging that gap between easy jog and you're about to start this session. This session probably isn't an easy jog. Maybe it's an interval session, maybe it's a threshold, maybe it's a tempo, maybe it's hills. And so you can pick that pace up a little bit. Don't just run really easy, really slow. Pick it up, push a bit faster, maybe get within one minute to 90 seconds of your marathon pace. And it's just gonna help physically and mentally get you ready to go and then we go back and we do our final running technique drills and strides well done okay guys so hopefully you've came back from you know your jog and if you progress the pace a little bit i don't mean for you to progress it into a marathon pace or anything like that i just you don't have to just jog easy. You can jog easy. Let's say you're doing 10 minutes. You can jog easy for, you know, four minutes and then you can pick up the pace like to a little bit steady. And so let's say for me example, my marathon pace is five minutes per mile. I might start at 7.30 pace. By two minutes, I might be at seven minute pace. By four minutes, I might be at 6.30. And then for the rest of the warm up, I might be close to six minutes. And it just means I'm not jogging, I'm getting the body moving in a direction of getting ready to start running a bit faster. Maybe we're doing threshold, maybe we're doing intervals. We need to start, the whole purpose of a warm up is to get the body and mind ready to start doing that. But now we can move into some more dynamic sort of routines. And remember we did a little bit of activation stuff. So I'll come back, I'll maybe take off some of the warm gear. I'll maybe start to get into roughly what I'm gonna wear for the session. And I start to just 
you know, I'm doing a bit of an adductor stuff here and it's a little bit more upbeat and up pace compared to what we were doing in the activation stuff but that's because the activation stuff we had just got up out of bed or we weren't sort of ready for that yet and so you can move into some of the lunges again but add a little bit of a stretch off to one side but also just add a little bit more of like movement where you're where you're getting ready to go you're getting a bit more motivated you're getting yourself excited about being able to train and maybe train a bit faster and so do what you gotta do, sort of open up the parts of your body that feels a bit stiff, maybe a couple of reaches off to the side, really good for the breathing. Maybe get the back moving a little bit, which, you know, again, is just gonna get you feeling a little bit better if you've been working all day. A lot of us get stiff in the hip flexor, so maybe you wanna do a bit of hip flexor stretching. But then we're gonna move into some drills. And the first drill we're gonna do is just some simple high knees. And so you'll do your high knees, you'll do it for about 10 to 15 meters, and you can repeat that about two to three times, so it can be out and then it can be back, high knees. And so again, we're focused on that string, pulling the body up towards the sky. So remember the string up towards the sky, your chest is up nice and tall, get those glutes engaged, make sure you're working them. But you can do those high knees, two to three sets, and then you can move into bum kicks. And so your bum kicks, Again, chest is up nice and tall. Focus on your rhythm, focus on your feet, the contact on the ground. Is it quick, is it slow? So you've got your bum kicks and you're doing that for two to three sets. Again, on your 10 to 15 meter stretch. And once you've done that, you can move into what we call B skips. And B skips is where you've took the motion of your bum kick, bum kick, you've took your high knee, and you're moving it into more of a extension. Okay, and so extension, you can do it walking at first. And when you're doing that, think about your running action. This is where you improve your technique the most. So you're up and through, and that drive phase at the end, you're not slamming your foot down, but there can be pace. But don't slam your feet down or you'll end up injuring yourself. And so here's it walking. And you're still opposite arm with opposite leg. You're still chest up nice and tall. You're still remembering that sort of pelvis tucked through. And then we can skip. And remember that the first time you do these drills, it might take a bit of practice. It might take a bit of work. But that's roughly what we're looking to do. We're trying to... Again, get the body from that sort of like static sitting around or just out of bed and just get it ready to go. But we're also trying to get the brain in a place to be ready to go. The next thing I would urge you to do is go along, walk and practice that push phase where you're pushing that hip through and engaging that glute. So you're up on the calf, the glutes push through and the hips push through. And that's really gonna help if you get stiff in the hips or you don't activate your glutes, start to add that into your warm-up routine. You don't always see it in the books, you don't always see it on the web, it'll really help. The last thing I like to do in my warm-up is I like to move into some straight legs. So my legs are straight, my toes are pointed, and this is, uh, this is the kind of thing you do towards the end when everything's starting to get warmed up. And so, straight legs, your chest is up nice and tall. You're doing that for 15 to 20 meters. And now what we're looking to do is get a little bit of fast twitch fibers going. And that's really, really useful. You're helping to recruit muscles. You can do some pogos, which is just standing on the spot, especially if you're gonna do some speed work. You wanna start getting the fast twitch muscle fibers working so that when you start, you're reducing that injury risk entirely and your brain and your body is ready to go. The last thing I'm gonna talk about is strides. And the strides are your final part of your session. And so you've done your activation stuff, you've packed your bag well this morning, you've done your easy jog, you moved your easy jog into a bit of steady. You've done some of the running drills, some of the technique drills. You've done a couple of pogos, got a little bit of plyometric -y stuff in there, and now you're ready to do your strides. Okay, and so the final part of what you're gonna to do today is your strides and we talked about the purpose 
but this is the part of the session where you can start to think about your running technique, you can start to think about where's my body at, you can start to think am I carrying my arms well, what's stiff, what parts of my body are holding me back from you know running smoothly. A lot of people want this beautiful technique, maybe this like Kipchoge-esque technique, but they're not really thinking about where is their body limited that perhaps is stopping them from doing that. And so start to have a think about how does my body feel when I'm doing my strides? Am I comfortable at the marathon type effort? Or you know, am I more comfortable when I'm actually running faster? Is it feeling a bit labored? Start to have a think about these things and start to think about where's my body at? Am I tight in the hip flexors? When, when I'm in that running action and you know, I'm probably limited to here, you know, Kipchoge's probably like here. And I'm really tight in the hip flexors and I'm really tight in the lower back. And so this is where you might want to incorporate some of these running drills. You might want to incorporate perhaps some home yoga, home mobility. You're trying to bring this stuff in so that when you're running, your body's not fighting against its own biomechanics. Perhaps when you're doing your strides, have a think, are you, are you, are you here? You know, are you, are you all hunched? Is it stiff? Are you hurting? Are you looking after your body? Are you doing your recovery stuff? Start to have a think about it. This warm up routine, it's gonna change everything for you. It's gonna reduce those injury risks. It's gonna get you better prepared, both physically and mentally for the session you're about to do. You'll absorb more of the session and you'll recover faster after the session, which is gonna to lead to better race results. It's gonna to lead to more consistent training and just watch how much better you get just by doing a simple routine like this. You're going to end up doing your session, you're going to end up having an absolute blinder and you're going to realize why this is so important. I'm going to do my final stride and then I'm ready to go. Once to be better.